Hello everyone and welcome to the semi-finals match for Grand Prix Kemble for the Revolution format. I'm Caillou and today uh, the players who are going to be facing off are Epid who is on a uh, blue red lab time a combo deck which uses lab 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 <laughs> laboratory maniac alongside borrowed time which borrowed time is red red um, uh, take an extra turn after this one but you excel all but the bottom card of your library used to be strictly a downside now with Labman, you can pull off some insanely quick uh, kills, and you can play a sort of tempo-y game plan with counter magic and a bunch of cantrips. Um, on the other end of the table, Fazer is playing Big Red. It's pretty much what it sounds like. It's a red, splash-white uh, mid-range deck that kind of just goes over the top, has a bunch of removal that can also turn into face burn. Um, in this matchup, Ferocious Flames are going to be particularly useful as they... Uh, provide removal versus lab, lab or, uh, laboratory maniacs. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how the keeps are. Uh, both players have played this matchup before and are pretty well worse in it. And it's a, it's an interesting matchup because sometimes it's very interactive and sometimes they just uh, sometimes they just top deck a removal spell or they just top deck the combo and you're like ah I got him GG's. Looks like Father's going to be keeping six, mulling away a pretty decent starting hand to a hand with no. Uh, Proactive action, but has double event horizon, so it can stymie the combo at least. It does draw into some proactive action there in Protoplasmera. Um, and then on the end of Fazer's turn, Epid is going to run out the Opt. Okay, Epid got a bottom and island. Interesting. Draws into another cursory glance. And Elemental Surprise. I feel like just keeping the land on top would have been worth it, especially when you have Burning Dawn and Lab Man as cards you need to play. And this deck can sometimes get greedy on... Um, get greedy on mana when you want to do lab man plus bar time slash multiple things in a single turn Ooh, gate of realms is also another good uh good catch there both of these will get tagged by the uh impressive amount of counter magic that epit has uh, amassed but again doesn't hit the third land drop and that hurts a lot in this matchup and wow a uh, kind of straight gas draws from uh epid and if or sorry from fazer and if epid uses bounce off here he runs at the Crystal Gans. Yeah, okay. If they're drawing a bounce off, they have no answer to his Merciless Shield Breaker coming down next turn. And on two lands, that's pretty close to dying. Um, impressive Skyline going to come down. I don't think you... You don't tap out for anything here. Yeah, it's just going to pass. And if... Uh, ooh, can run out of the Penthouse Office? No, it's just better to run at the Luxurious Estate as an untapped land. And then Merciless Shield Breaker here. Oh no, it's actually going to Protoplasmera. If you're an uh, Epid, I think you just cursory glance this. Yeah, because it still has mana value, uh, it has mana, mana value uh, zero on the stack, right? Or does it go, to, even if it's at mana value two on the stack, uh, you can still counter it with cursory glance. And you really want bounce off for like, uh, like obviously Merciless Shieldbreaker's here, but Amaret is also scary. Epid probably just going to quickly check whether Protoplasmera's mana value is uh, 0, 2, or 4. I don't know whether it's 0 or 2, but I know it's one of the two. So so Epid runs, actually ran out the bounce off on the Protoplasmera and thankfully drew into another, otherwise would not have an answer to this Merciless Shieldbreaker right here. Um, so Fazer will get the Penthouse Office, and on 5 lands, uh, getting to plot only means 2 more land top decks. And unless Epid hits a... Uh, uh, like a borrowed time somewhere in the next few draws. Doesn't exactly have a quick uh, kill here. So yeah, Faws are going to pay three for Calamity. Interesting. This is definitely a free Cursory Glance. Yep, Cursory Glance coming down. Epid having a, a pretty insane density of counter magic right now. But that's gonna, Elemental Surprise is going to stop that, and it's not a fourth land. I actually think that letting the Calamity resolve and then... Playing Elemental of Surprise on your turn to kill it, maybe, was not the worst play. Okay, Faws are going to play Climb to the Peak. And can't ca counter this with Bounce Off, so it's just going to land. And definitely a scary spot, because now um, Fazer can play a land off this next turn, play Merciless Shieldbreaker, it's uncounterable. And all of a sudden, Fa uh, who Okay, only land is Ice Path, so can't actually do that line. But the rest is not much more encouraging. Uh, Amaret coming down next turn uh, forces the bounce off, which means that there isn't a good spot for Shieldbreaker. Epid does finally hit the fourth land, though. But yeah, I don't think you can't tap out for anything here because you need something to counter the Amaret. Oh man, Alder Peak Terror as well. Yeah, this is the thing with Big Red is that 
they just it just has threat after threat after threat all of which double as interaction because alder peak uh, you can have it fight creatures Amaret has the minus mode to just come down and immediately lightning helix something merciless shield breaker technically isn't removal but if they don't want to like lose their lands and the ability to play the game they kind of have to just put counters on the creature and then chump with the creatures to keep a shield breaker off so he's going to lead with the shield breaker this is a free bounce off you're not going to get another, another chance so might as well just go for it so yep bounce off on the shield breaker and of course epic doesn't know it uh okay and gets a fifth land but this is still this is now a dicey position because doesn't have um doesn't have removal for or doesn't have any more counter magic they don't have uh card draw and doesn't have good answers to Fazer's uh, beat down plan what's off the plot okay, the plot is just a luxurious estate so can't actually cast that so it's not going to matter but yeah still climb to the peak is still going to be insane here because um there's still two more cards to draw off of it, which probably means Amret and another Burning Dawn. Ooh, and Ferocious Flame is an excellent top deck, means that uh, Fazer can hold up just a single mana and then disrupt the combo. So yep, is going to tap out for an Amret. And Amret is, along with Event Horizon, one of the main reasons that this deck is splashing white. I'm just going to plus one Amret. Oh no, it's going to minus? No, yeah, it's going to plus. Okay, meant to plus. It doesn't attack with the Cleric, interestingly enough. Uh, it has haste. I don't think there's... Any reason not to? I guess the idea is playing around Elemental of Surprise. So yeah, on end step, Epid is going to play the Elemental of Surprise. And this is kind of a roundabout way of doing things, but if Epid hits a 6 land here, I was going to say, could have gone uh, Elemental of Surprise plus Burning Dawn or Elemental of Surprise pl plus Labman to kill Amaret. Without the 6 land here, things are looking dire. And again, basically all of this came from Epid bottoming that island earlier and just left them... Not mana screwed, not technically, but definitely at a mana deficiency. So I'm going to drop another Elemental of Surprise. Probably just chip in at the Omret to knock it down to two. Yeah, I just, ha just have to get something in there. Because, um, yeah, Fazer's Fawzer, going to quick chump with the uh, Cleric here. Fazer could also, like, because they have so much removal, they could Event Horizon on the Elemental of Surprise. But then if Epid, un if Epid goes main to Borrowed Time, you feel real dumb. So, see so how are just going to chump the 4-4 four, four Elemental of Surprise. Uh, it's 4-4 four, four because both statics apply to it, both its own and the other Elemental of Surprise. Um, oh, and pre-damage, Fazer's actually just going to Ferocious Flame the Elemental of Surprise. Um, I think that's a dangerous move because it leaves uh, Fazer without interaction for a combo when you can... I think Amaret going to 3 does not matter that much. Like, you can still minus 2 to kill something. Okay, it draws another climb to the peak. Um, and he's going to choose Ferocious Flame off as a last card from the first climb to the peak. Going to run it out to shoot the Elemental Surprise. And yeah, like, this is just a long, slow death for uh, Epid here. Needs to draw, like, Borrowed Time into a cantrip, and even that might not be enough because... If, Enter if Fazer never ta taps off Event Horizon, can just stop the combo in, and is accruing so much value at this point. Yeah, just gonna drop another Climb to the Peak. So off the Climb to the Peak, hitting Burning Dawn, Ascendance Peak, just to start headquarters, another Ferocious Flame, another Armored. Oh, okay, that's a borrowed time from Epid, but because of that Climb to the Peak, there's Climb to the Peak, the Cleric, and Armored. An actually insane play uh, from Epid here, is to burning dawn i don't even i don't even think this is the right play but an absolutely insane line would be oh no, you know what the bottom card of your library is right and it's just an island and because epid has a trouble i was gonna say you could gamble on the on the bottom card of your library being a cantrip um burning dawn the cleric to turn off event horizon on lab man borrowed time exiling all but the bottom card and then if the bottom card of your library is a uh, cantrip, you can win on the spot. Of course, this is also assuming that Fazer doesn't have any more Ferocious Flames in hand. I believe Fazer only has three copies main, might have the full playset though. But yeah. And unfortunately, that isn't an option if Epid passes the turn cycle, because Fazer plus ones makes, the, makes another cleric. And then Amrit becomes a creature and stuff just gets real bad. So Epid is going to Burning Dawn. Burning Dawn on Amrit. Just going to... Poke it down a little bit. Still vulnerable to Event Horizon here, so can't tap out for the borrowed time yet. And 
Okay, Solara for uh, Fazer. The bombs don't stop. Um, can play Ascendance Peak here and then... Play, yeah, okay, he's going to play Ascendance Peak off the Climb to the Peak. And then, oh, Climb to the Peak, getting an Ascendance Peak. That's a little bit of fl nice flavor win right there. But yeah, now is probably going to drop... Can you drop all of our Peak Terror? Like, I don't see any reason... Because you have... You can just go in and then... No, okay, it looks like he's going to drop Solara main too then. Never mind. Oh no, he's just going to pass. Not going to play the Solara or the Alder Peak? That is surprising to me. I'm not sure why that choice was made. I guess keeping up the double Event Horizon and the thought is, I win here no matter what. Uh, Epid Top Decks and Merciless Shield Breaker. This is a t uh, one of the backup combos with Elemental of Surprise since you can have it ETB come in as a 5-5 five five, uh, haste first strike and you get two of its triggers which is quite terrifying, but not very good here on the board where Fazer is just pumping out tokens turn after turn. Okay, on uh, Fazer's turn, it's going to play a top-decked Calamity Smith. Once again, still looks like it looks like it's still going to keep up double Event Horizon. Does not want to give Epid any windows to be able to combo off. Okay, Epid going to flash in an Elemental of Surprise. Main reason is to eat one of these tokens, and then on the untap, be able to do the Merciless Shield Breaker line we talked about. And is Fazer, Fazer is not going to uh, risk uh, an Event Horizon on it. Probably just thinking, okay, I can untap and Omret this. We totally chill. Okay, Burning Dawn from Epid. So does Epid Burning Dawn to kill, guaranteed kill Omret? Or Merciless Shieldbreaker to get board presence? The thing is, uh, technically, you could say the Merciless Shieldbreaker is a... No, it's not a guaranteed Omret kill because they just chump the Merciless uh, Shieldbreaker. Uh, with the with the cleric so yeah actually the burning dawn might actually be the better play here because you just get a guaranteed snipe on uh Amaret. and yeah also the problem is uh, calamity smith is at four so if you play merciless shield breaker uh and calamity so you have to attack calamity smith to poke it down to two and then Amaret survives and starts chunking up the board yeah, it's just not a good time i feel like you take out burning Do you burning down the Amaret just to buy yourself some more time. Ooh, Epid is actually going to Burning Dawn the Calamity. I kind of don't agree with this, because if you Burning Dawn Omret, I guess the idea is if you Burning Dawn Omret, they can just play another Omret off the Climb to the Peak. Okay, I can see that. And wow, this is actually kind of insane uh, top decks from Fazer. I guess they're about halfway through their library, so. But it's getting different bomb after different bomb in a row. So plays a Ferocious Flame off the Climb to the Peak, to kill the last um, Elemental of Surprise, and can play a Gate, a Gate of Realms here while still holding up double Event Horizon. Yeah. I think this game is pretty much over at this point. Fazer is wise enough to never tap out, and Fazer never needs to tap out to just keep pumping out tokens with Omret, uh, and Epid can't ever combo off, which is their only way of recouping this huge loss in board presence and tempo. I've been hitting a third copy of Lab Man. Yeah, the Grey Ogres are not going to be helping right now. Okay, so Epid on their turn tapped out for a Merciless Shield Breaker. Fazer just drops the counters on a Cleric. And on end is going to Gate of Realms to shoot face. And top decks a Merciless Shield Breaker of his own right back. Um, so if Fazer taps for Alder... So wait, how many lands? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... So Gate of Realms costs 2 mana. Oh, I was going to say you could Amaret face. I think, did, I think, did Epid have, or sorry, did Fazer have lethal here? So you attack for 3 on the ground, one of which Epid can block, so that's 2. Uh, you play uh, Alder Peak Terror for another 4, so that's 6 damage. Uh, Amaret minuses for uh, 5, that's 11. Um, and then you Gate of Realms to be able to shoot face for another 3. That's 14. Epid would have been dead. So yeah, actually, Fazer had lethal here, unless I'm miscounting. Okay, in combat, Fazer going to swing in for 2 with the Clerics, and then just hold up a bunch of mana. And the... Oh my god. <laughs> the whole playset of Lab Man. Well, I think if you're Epid, you're dead next... You you know you're the, that you're dead next turn, because you take 3 on end, um, then... They can, like, uh, even if you play a creature, then they swing in for two, Omret your face, hit another three off the Gate of the Realms, 
or can even just bring back a Merciless Shield Breaker. So I think if you're Epid, you just have to try and force the combo, and then Fazer Event Horizon's a lab man. But I think like it's one of those things where like you have to try. I mean, actually, does Epid even get to try? Because they know the bottom card of their library is not a cantrip, so they can't even hope that Fazer has no removal in hand because the Gate of the Realms is still onboard removal that kills a lab man. Ugh. So yep, looks like Epid is going for it. Is just gonna play out the borrowed time with a whopping four lab mans in hand. If if Epid had again, if Epid had one more uh, land, I could actually see double lab man last turn into another double lab man as a very defensible play. It wouldn't have worked because Solara would have come down and eaten them all. But um, so Epid's just gonna play lab man number one, and then on end. Fazer's just going to kill it with Gate of Realms. No skin off his back because he still has double Event Horizon to take care of a potential other two Labmans. In addition to uh, Alder Peak Terror makes it so that if Epid passes to uh, Fazer, Fazer has another source of removal. Oh, and Gate of Realms again. So, so yeah, last card, card of the bottom library was the bottomed island. So can now play double lab. So yeah, now plays double Labman and hopes that Fazer doesn't have another removal spell other than the onboard Gate of Realms. Fazer, why are you saying thinking? You have no counter magic. And yep, here comes a second lab man. And then on end, the double event horizon. And Epid just going to run out the GG, yeah. And Fazer, I think the thing is just having all of your uh, win cons also be sorcery speed removal, insane. And it, it forces uh, Epid to have cantrips in addition to the combo to be able to do a one-turn combo. But then even then, Fazer also still has, um, also still has uh, like, instant speed removal in the form of Ferocious Flame and Event Horizon. And yeah, Fazer is uh, one game away from uh, getting to the finals. Um, Big Red has been a solid meta cont contender from the very start of Revolution's format. Um... It's one of the few decks that has uh, held up uh, and even gotten better uh, post-rotation, thanks to stuff like Calamity and the Plotlands. Um, but it's never made a finals appearance. It has, it's had, like, multiple triple or, I think, yeah, multiple double or triple uh, placements in top eights. But if Fazer wins the next game, um, this will be the first time Big Red is in the finals. Meanwhile, on Epid's end... Uh, has a bit of a hill to climb with two games in a row. We'll get to be the, have the next one on the play, and being on the play is really good for this deck because of the tempo counter spells. Looking at sideboards, Fazer. If you're Fazer, you probably bring in four Banish to the Ice, and maybe not even four Banish. I think you just actually, yeah, actually I can see four Banish to the Ice, and you swap out four Event Horizons. You call it a day. It's basically just. Banish the Ice becomes unconditional removal, where Event Horizon is conditional, and that can come back to bite you quite sometimes. And I don't know that Epid has any uh, non-creature perms that you want to remove. Let's go over to Epid's side. Yeah, it's all creatures. Out the side, nothing really. Um, I could see Epid bringing in, like, Losey's Determination to Gate as more, like, you know, stack interaction. Maybe Tetha League or Endless Paper Trail if you would really want to go over. I think that you really want Endless Paper Trail as more sources of draw plus uh, a big threat that can kind of tussle with the Planeswalkers. So I can see bringing in Endless Paper Trails instead of Shield Breakers. But I don't know. Shield Breaker is also really good if you can just, when you're on the play and you just go Elemental Surprise into Shield Breaker. It, because Big Red is such a, is a deck that's so greedy for lands. So it's hard to say. It's really hard to say. So getting into game two, looks like Fazer did bring in the Banish to the Ice. Um, looks like Fazer is going to keep... Okay, it looks like, yeah, both players are going to keep at six. Epid has Borrowed Time and Labman in their uh, opener, but Fazer has Ferocious Flame and Banish to the Ice. Two removal spells here, so is if uh, Epid goes for the turn two combo, is going to have a nasty surprise waiting. And so yeah, no, Epid's just going to pass... Has cursory glance and bounce off to be able to wait out right here, and again, uh, this is another reason that getting a lot of lands is good because then you can uh, play Labman and still have uh, counterspell backup. I've been kept in the Ferocious Flames. Interesting. I don't think the Ferocious Flames are super good in this matchup unless you have your own 
uh, Merciless Shield Breaker, which speaking of Merciless Shield Breaker, um, uh, could be able to drop that. Climb to the peak coming down, I think you just Cursory Glance this. Yeah, Epic is going to drop the Cursory Glance, and then can bounce off the Merciless Shield Breaker that is doubtless following next turn. Second copy of Lab Man. Yeah, this is, Epid is once again getting kind of choked on uh, lands. He misses the third land drop right there. Meanwhile, Fazer just hits, keeps hitting the gas. Won't be able to play Solara next turn because uh, Rogue's Palace will enter tapped. But, okay, bounce off coming down to stop the Merciless Shieldbreaker. Again, that would have been devastating if Epid didn't have the counter there. Another copy of Borrowed Time. This is the problem with the co with uh, running the combos. That sometimes you just get flooded with multiple pieces. I actually, and that's the thing. If Epid actually had, um, if Epid had a third land there, uh, could you could borrow time and Lab Man, but then you actually you don't have a cantrip. So, but finally hits that third land. I could almost see just playing a Lab Man there, but nah. Oh, Fazer brought in Mystery Stones. Interesting. I'm not sure. I guess. I guess it works well versus invoke stuff like Bounce Off and uh, Burning Dawn. I don't know that it's worth bringing in in this matchup. Yeah, so Mystery Stone's going to come down. And Fazer just going to keep up 4 mana there. On end, Epid's going to drop the Elemental Surprise. And I wouldn't be surprised uh, if Epid went like Lab Man Swing for 5. Ooh, and a fourth land here. There's also the potential for... No, actually, it needs five. I was going to say potential for Epid to, like, borrow time into... Actually, can you chain... Could chaining borrowed times here? No. The chaining borrowed times would have been good... Is only good if uh, Fazer taps out. I actually think that playing the... Yeah, playing the Lab Man here is great as, like, a bait. Um, because I think what Fazer could do here is... Epid swings five. And if... And maybe Fazer doesn't want to waste the removal spells. We'll go next turn. Solara... Okay, start of combat is going to Ferocious Flame, the Elemental Surprise. Does the Lab Man lose haste then, so you can't attack with it? Okay, yeah. And on end, Epid's uh, Fazer's just going to crack the Mystery Stones. I can see Fazer playing the Solara and minus twoing. Okay, no, he's going to Mystery Stones here. Again, just exiling it now to draw a card. Luxurious Estate, that's not another threat. Gate of the Realms is a threat that Fazer can keep up. Uh, can use while also keeping up mana is also very insane in this matchup as we know because it's a win con that also acts as repeatable instant speed removal so Fazer can like can tap out for this and still have a banish to the ice or an event horizon up the problem is that the problem for Fazer is that oh wait can this tap immediately to kill something it has one two three four five so no, this is this costs four, so can't gate of realms. So the interesting thing here, oh, and it's gonna tap out for banish the. Oh my god! And the, 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 oh, this is so bad. Oh, this is actually insane because it gives uh, Epid a fifth land. So Epid actually can win here if Epid is not afraid of ferocious flame. If Epid's afraid of ferocious flame, which is honestly a fair thing to to be afraid of, um, then can just might just let this chance pass. But if Epid untaps. You play Lab Man, you play Borrowed Time, then you play another Borrowed Time, and you win. And the question is, is Epid just going to go for it? And also has Cursory Glance Backup for removal. Though the problem with the Cursory Glance Backup for removal, um, it's a tough situation, because if you play Lab Man, if you, because you can play, I guess Epid's just going to go for it, yeah. He's going to be like, yeah, if I lose to, if I lose to Ferocious Flame, I lose to Ferocious Flame. And I remember Epid did mull to six, so knows what is, is on bottom. Ooh, taps out for the lab man. Okay. And yeah, Fazer does not have uh, the requisite ferocious flame. Epid is like praying right here. Fazer tapping Beloved Chapel as if to pretend to have a ferocious flame. Um, oh, it looks like Epid bottomed a lab, another lab man. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Then going for that line is actually just free. So, drops another lab man, then you drop another borrowed time, and you just win. Oh man, and it's crazy because again, it was that sorcery speed f uh, banish to the ice which gave Epid that fifth land they needed to combo off. So we're going to a game three. Fazer had all of the tools to uh, mitigate or prevent that, but pulled the trigger a little bit too early. 
That definitely is obviously a very tricky matchup to navigate, but... Okay, going into uh, game three, Foster's gonna mull a two-lander, but it has triple removal spell and a climb to the peak on three mana. Uh, Epid, meanwhile, is gonna keep a hand. It's a two-lander, but has a turn one, uh, and actually has, you have to, all these pain lands is actually a little scary, but has double opt, so you can run out one to try and find a lab man, and has a bunch of counter magic. Foster keeping five, uh, Still another two lander, but has Ferocious Flame and a climb to the peak if they hit a third land. But I think if you're Epid, you just play Misty Peak untapped and pass, and then you can opt an on end. See so yeah, how plays the Misty Peak. Ooh, the Banish the Ice is a really good top deck for Fazer. As soon as they hit a, th a third land, they have a double removal spell for the Lab Man. Of course, if Fazer doesn't hit a third land here, stuff starts going real sideways. So Epid gonna bottom an Elemental Surprise makes sense on only two uh, two lands and hits an island. There goes that third land, and a fourth land is definitely not gonna get mana screwed here, but does want some more uh, selection here. Okay, and then pass. I, I if you're Epid, I actually don't think that you run out the opt on end here if Father doesn't play anything, because I think you just like you're like yay there's they're screwed on mana, I can just. I'm, yeah, it's going to hold up the opt as like, hey, I got combo protection. And now it's, a, it's this is a kind of reverse scenario to what was happening um, before, where Fazer was, uh, Fazer had a bunch of lands in the past two games, Epid was getting a little mana screwed. Now Epid has, is drawing a, a nice free bundle of lands, um, and Fazer is kind of on the back foot despite going first. Oh, no, 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 Epid's going to tap for something? I think this could be a mistake. Yeah, I think Epid was thinking of, like, Burning Dawning Face, but that sucks here. No, no, no. Your bounce-offs are so good here, and they're really good against Gate of the Realms or a, climb to the, or, or a Climb to the Peak, like this one that's about to come down. So you counter the Climb to the Peak. And then I think you can opt here, because if you hit a Lab Man, you just win on the untap? No, 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 actually, you know you don't. Sorry. Eavesdrop, that's another... Okay, having two cantrips never hurts. I think you just play the Mountain. Playing the Luxurious Estate tapped. Interesting. And it's just going to pass. Can still counter an Omret or a Climb to the Peak. Yeah, Omret and Merciless Shieldbreaker, not great here. If you're Epid, I think you still counter this Bounce Off. Or counter this Climb to the Peak with Bounce Off. Yup. And you, I think you play the you play the Opt. Yup, is going to play the Opt. Opt is usually the better counter to run out first. Since if you see another Cantrip, you're pretty fine bottoming it. Because it guarantees that if you combo off, you can win. Technically, TM, TM. Okay, bottom's Burning Dawn, draws into another land, is desperately uh, hunting for a lab man before Fazer can stabilize. Mystery Stones, that's another uh, way to draw cards here. You can just play that off the, play like the mountain, play the Mystery Stones, and you don't need to invoke your bounce offs, though definitely could. I could definitely see that being like a reasonably fine play. Also, Mystery Stones in here is uh, pretty good if you can... Uh, uh, if you like, if you scry a lab man to, you can scry a lab man, drop it to bottom, and then borrow time, and then untap and win. So, I could definitely see mystery stones, um, and then uh, cracking it for the scry. Okay, bottoms a cursory glance is not. Oh, I think that not cracking the mystery stones on Epid's own turn is a mistake. An interesting slash good thing is that either of Fazer's. Uh, Win cons now require them to tap out. Does hit a fourth land, but if Fazer wants to keep up uh, uh, interaction, he's going to lose out on the ability to play these uh, uh, these threats for at least one more uh, land drop. Because Ferocious Flame, you can play it out. Um, ooh, Fazer just plays the Windbeaten Stones tapped and passes, so is keeping up the double interaction for the combo. It's like, eh, cool, I'm, 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 I'm whatever. Okay, Epid going to scry off the Mystery Stones. And then if you're Epid, do you just, like, I do you just untap and cast uh, one of, like, I'd, like, and cast one of the bounce, or invoke one of the bounce-offs? I could see it. Okay, Epid bottoming Elemental of Surprise, and there's a Lab Man! Okay, so, the problem is if Epid uh, goes for this right now, um, can't stop Ferocious Flame plus Banish to the Ice, so we'll just lose. See, so yeah, I think it's a lot safer for Epid to just, like, um play the bounce off, and then pretend to hold up more interaction. Like, like you play the Misty Peak untapped, 
to pretend to have a counter spell, and then you play the bounce off thing, is my call. And then you can misread stones plus eaves. You have mis no aid. Well, I guess has misread stones plus eavesdrop, so beats double removal spell. Oh, that beats double removal spell. As long as Epid doesn't play the lab man first. If Epid borrowed times here and then passes, the only thing this loses to is triple removal spell on Fazer's end, which Fazer doesn't have. Of course, we don't know that. Um, or at least, sorry, Epid doesn't know that. So, Epid's like, damn, what if I run into Ferocious Flame, Banish to the Ice, Banish to the Ice, or Ferocious Flame, Banish to the Ice, Ferocious Flame? I think sometimes, I think you just kind of have to take that chance. Maybe I'm crazy. But yeah, I feel like, I feel like that's worth taking the chance on. Ooh, and Epid gonna run out, uh, the Bounce Off Totem. See, it doesn't end up going for the, the line, but we'll start, we'll get to start poking in with, the. Uh, with the Shell Swarm. And I mean, double Shell Swarm plus Burning Dawn is not the worst, not gonna lie. It's still a, a respectable clock in its own right. And if Fazer like untaps and tries to like, even if Fazer untaps, has a land, plays Amaret, kills a Shell Swarm, Epid wins. On end step, Fazer's gonna actually use the Ferocious Flame on the Shell Swarm. Oh wow, that's actually really surprising to me. Okay, draws an Ice Path. And if Fazer taps out here, Fazer loses. Oh, this is not... This is like the... Okay, Fazer, Fazer has lost! Oh, Fazer has lost! At this point, if I'm Epid, I'm just going... I'm just dropping, I'm revealing my hand and being like, Suck it! Okay, maybe not like that, but... The, the, that would be disrespectful, and we're all about sportsmanship here. But this is... Oof, oof, ouch, my bones. Fazer's like, show me the combo. I mean, yeah, Epid, I mean, Epid doesn't really need to play it out. Epid really is just, like, dragging this out. There's no, there's no free inter- Oh, and Epid even brought in the negate, goddamn, this- Yeah, this game was a cleanup. The Fazer's mana screw hurt so much in that early point of the game. See a borrowed time coming down. The lab man. On the second upkeep, the Misty Peak gets popped to the Shieldbreaker trigger, but this really doesn't matter. And with that, wham bam, thank you ma'am, you've been lab timed. Epid, after that grueling game one, comes back from behind and takes a 2-1 over Fazer to seal a spot in the finals. So, it's gonna be Epid's lab time versus the Dark Horse Mardu midrange slash control from Scribble, which was a deck that basically had never been seen before in League, no one had really concepted it, but it tore its way through the bracket, um... I think uh, only had one loss in the Swiss portion and went undefeated so far in the top cut. So it's going to be exciting to see uh, which of those two decks comes out on top. But until next time, this is going to be Caillou signing off.